something that's on your heart or that you feel is up in the world that needs to be addressed or could be addressed. Yeah, I think I have something. Nice. The closer the mic, the better. I just read a quote saying, uh, have faith in humanity, um, which I do have. But my question is that sometimes the odds can look uh, different and how to keep faith when that is the case. So not saying that humanity is now doomed in a way, but what if the odd seems uh, like very off in like any situation though. So it doesn't have to be like specifically on uh, where the earth is going, how to still keep faith in that certain circumstance or positive outcome when the odds are um, not looking very bright. Cool. This is that's not a direct answer to your topic question, but it does relate and it comes up for me to sort of address because it does actually solve the core, I think, of what you're asking about. And that is <clears throat> I think one of the main the main issues we have at this time is people's strong attachment to certain outcomes, which actually generates uh, the phenomena of shooting ourselves in the foot. So, but let me start with this. So what if we're all doomed? Like, it's not that big a deal. I think that we have so much attachment to this concept of um, being alive or the world being a certain way. And again, that's uh, having a counter a counterproductive effect on our behavior and our approach and our state of being. We literally step out of our sort of relaxed, aligned state of natural wisdom. And we start emotionally reacting to things, seeking for this short term emotional gratification over and over and over again. I've kind of landed on this topic of emotional gratification as being one of the main issues or challenges or causes of our problematic relationships in the world at a even at a global scale right now. So if people had more perspective, if they could zoom out, if they could be less attached to their self importance, and just look at life as it is, and see that we're just a tiny portion of creation when it comes to our physical bodies in this incarnation. It doesn't mean it's not extremely valuable and precious. But in the grander scheme of things, even just from a purely physical standpoint of the natural world. Um, right now, there's probably 100 lions eating a gazelle. Uh, there's uh, there's probably tens of thousands of ants dying this very second by poison. Um, there, there's so much happening like in the animal world, and there's so many people dying right now. And the COVID-19 thing is such a prime example of how we can give meaning to one topic that represents something to us that makes us fear death, when so much more death is around us all the time than the actual statistics of this virus. So we blow this out of proportion, just because it's part of our consciousness, just because we've given it a name and a symbol, and we've given it attention. And then we no longer see life as it is. We completely see it as we've constructed a, it in our minds by giving it specific meaning, symbol, symbols, uh, significant. Then we lose touch with the natural way of things. And then we start to when we have a lack of meta perspective, meta overview of what we are, of the eternal nature of everything. But even on a physical level, if we forget just the size of the sun, the size of the earth, and then the size of our bodies. And then the fact that physical bodies come and go all the time is just a part of the physical cycle. Then we start to really make ourselves too important as a human, as a species, as a physical body. And then our entire perspective is off. And so we're no longer 
dancing in harmony with the circle of life, if you will. We're trying to isolate ourselves from that existence, try to protect ourselves from the rest of existence. And we make a big deal out of very subjective biased things. And we forget to put everything in perspective. And so we, we have this feeling of self importance, uh, just because we are afraid that we can die, which is why true direct spiritual investigation is so helpful, because you can directly experience that it's impossible for what you are to ever cease to exist. Once you have that direct perception, you will no longer put as much emphasis on the body being so important. You allow the body to be seen as part of nature. The body is nature. It's not inside of nature, the body is nature, just as much as the lion is nature, just as much as this table is nature, just as much as the rock is nature, the tides of the ocean are nature. And so things naturally get swallowed up and spit out and things die and things are reborn and things die and things are reborn. We're not that important. Yes, of course, we should do our best to live as fully as we can. But that's a natural phenomenon that comes from perspective that comes from being relaxed, that comes from being confident, that comes from having overview, that comes from not isolating ourselves out from everything else, and trying to then protect this isolated bubble, and then pretend that we care about other bubbles, because if we don't, then society will frown upon us, and then our bubble is threatened. Therefore, we should show care, we should show kindness, we should show solidarity, in all these kind of distorted ways, because if we don't, our bubble is at stake. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on and on as to the ignorance that this sense of self importance rooted in a lack of understanding our deathless nature causes. And so we are a messed up civilization, or mentally ill equipped to handle situations well, and with balance and with true love and care, and compassion and wisdom, because we make ourselves so important as a physical body. We isolate, we, we try to rise above nature, above existence, and then deal with life in that way, trying to avoid things, trying to... The only reason we do that, again, is because we have limited our perspective to the sense of our senses. We look at the world through our senses, so we cannot help but be selfish. We cannot help but be biased. We cannot help but be oppositional. We cannot help but separate ourselves and each other. So no matter how good of a person we try to be, no matter how much we try to live up to society, we're doomed, we're bound to be selfish, unless we can break the cycle of limited perspective. And so the only solution to everything we're seeing right now is true spirituality. It's a true understanding of consciousness, it's a true understanding of existence, the nature of what we are. Then as a result, you take yourself much more lightly. It's like, oh, I could die tomorrow. And that's actually okay. I'm, I'm alive now, I'm going to do what inspires me, I'm going to live as freely as I can, as courageously as I can. And naturally, from this freed up state, we care about what we see, we care about others, because we don't try to elevate ourselves above nature, we see that we as the body, are nature, equal to everything else. So we don't have to fight an equality war. We don't have to fight any kind of war. We just know the balance of things. And people die all the time. People die all the time. It's okay. I might die tomorrow. I might die tonight. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Um, and so this false sense of self importance, first of all, causes the problems that make you kind of feel like the odds are not so much in our favor anymore. So this is the root cause, if you will, of the behaviors and the patterns that we're seeing that is kind of concerning you right now, or um, making it seem like the odds are against us. So first of all, we cannot solve anything we care too much about, meaning that we're too serious about that we're giving too much significance to. So we have to lighten up. And we have to see that we have to become okay, and get a sense of liberation out of the fact that we're not that important, that it really doesn't matter what happens, that it really doesn't matter if we die or that we don't die, or that we get sick or that we don't get sick or that whatever. I'm not saying it's all pleasant, or that it all feels good. But in the grand scheme of things, if we want to have a balanced view, 
we have to accept the fact, just like the gazelle accepts that it's being eaten. There's a sort of instinctual knowledge of that and an acceptance of that. Now, you might still struggle, try to get out of the tiger's mouth, if you will, while it's happening. But once it happens, like if you see animals that are caught by predators, uh, there's an acceptance that comes over them almost every time once they are caught and they realize they can't escape anymore. It's like they completely relax. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's nature. It, b because there's instinctual knowledge of its sort of unity, of the creature's unity with nature and its eternal underlying foundation. There's an instinctual unconscious knowledge of this. And there's no overriding it with the mind of concepts and giving this significance or that significance. Yes, it has the response of, I want to live. That's kind of genetic, if you will. That's this root response that we all have programmed in us to survive and thrive and evolve and procreate and what have you. But there is also not yet that layer of self-consciousness and self-importance and, and bloated egos to the degree where the gazelle will go and have a pity party because it's being eaten. It will, or, or like try to start some kind of a movement and gather the funds for that movement and support that movement and gather solidarity for the gazelles. It just wouldn't ever think to do that. Obviously it, it can't because it doesn't have that type of self-reflective ability. But if you see how surrendered it is to its own death, once it sees struggle is futile, so to speak. There's a beauty to that. And I think we should all develop that if we want to be honest. And a lot of people are not going to like that statement because they believe they are not eternal, because they have not investigated the concept of death properly and the eternal nature of consciousness. So out of fear of death, out of fear of lack, we do many, 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 many stupid things that compound and compound and layers of self-importance and self-importance and self-importance. And then we get this messed up society that's completely lost in an intellectualized mental dream world of facts and ideas and notions and morals. And, and we've really gotten way out of touch with our natural wisdom because we've made ourselves too important. We no longer accept the fact that tomorrow we could be trampled by an elephant or we could die in a hurricane or it's just so frightening to us. It's just, we don't want to die. Like there's such an importance placed upon ourselves because we see ourselves as separate from nature. So that's one thing when it comes to how did we get to this place of seemingly no hope for humanity and how did we get this, to this kind of behavior? I'd say that's one of the main causes is that bloated sense of self-importance, lack of perspective, lack of balanced view, lack of acceptance of that we are nature. We're not separate. We can't isolate ourselves and then try to sustain eternal survival and acquire everything that we need and all that stuff. So we need to accept that there is suffering. We need to accept that there is death. We need to accept that this is finite and limited and that that doesn't actually define who or what we are. We got to find a way to free ourselves from the senses and the mind and the ego. And there is many ways to do that, which is what we teach. So if people pay attention, they could solve all the problems in the world just by gaining direct spiritual investigative interest. Now, then that same principle can be applied to perhaps the shepherd's desire for a particular outcome for humanity. And I share with you the empathy and compassion and vision for a better planet. Obviously, that's part of what motivates us to do what we do. It's because we see there's an alternative. There's a different way to go about things. But at the same time, even when, let's say, I seem really passionate about it, and I am, it's still sort of a mode. It's still a choice. It's a choice that's seen in an even bigger perspective. I choose to, I choose to at least periodically or at times be really passionate about the potential of mankind and to have faith in that and to almost in a sense, fight for that and to churn through all these concepts for people and to try to distill some degree of clarity and get through to their minds 
and our, bring our consciousness to light. I go to great, great lengths, spend a lot of energy throughout my life for that purpose. At the same time, I don't ultimately care as to what the outcome is going to be, because I have this simultaneous perspective that's holding it all in sort of a balanced state of non attachment. So I can be passionate about a certain relative engagement, a certain dynamic, a certain, perhaps relationship, or um, my dynamic with the people that I'm teaching or the world at large, the vision that we have for it, what can we implement? And especially once you start to sort of wake up from this matrixy way of thinking, you start to see solutions, because they're very apparent, if you're not so self absorbed, if you're outside of your own bubble, it's quite naturally obvious as to what would be helpful for humanity. But because nobody dares to step out of their bubble and make the sacrifices required, we all continue to perpetuate stupidity. And then we try to turn to some artificially generated, socially reinforced and expected sense of solidarity for all kinds of distorted causes uh, that then seem really great and seem really kind and seem really compassionate. But it's really just the result of our lack of self, true self knowledge. And it really is the result of our self importance, our bloated sense of self importance, even our kindness and our compassion. It's, it's mighty fake. It's like, for the most part, it's so fake. It's so self self important, importance based, it's so selfish, the way people care, true care is sacrifice of self image sacrifice, not that one has to sacrifice their lives, but that one is willing to sacrifice one's self image, if that is in the best interest of all. To sacrifice one's own fears and sense of self importance for its own survival, that one is able to hold that in a light hearted way and not make oneself so important. From a space of self importance and self significance, you cannot care about other people. You only care about what they're going through because you'd hate it if it happened to you. That's not love. That is self importance projected as solidarity and then trying to guilt trip everybody else. That's not falling for these traps. Humanity's sense of compassion is really skewed, in my opinion. So anyway, we have to apply this to our own vision for mankind and say, well, things happen all the time. And things uh, don't always work out in the best possible way. And somehow that too has to be okay. If we don't make it as a civilization, the universe won't blink, it won't even notice in the grand scheme of things. Um, we're talking about trillions and trillions of stars and uh, billions of civilizations that have come and gone, come and gone, come and gone. Uh, we wouldn't be the first to be eradicated from the planet. We did it quite recently on Mars. So <laughs> it's a pattern of ours. It's a theme. We have difficulty dropping it. So now we're here, we saw this blue little planet thought, okay, let's migrate here, because uh, our bodies uh, could no longer operate on Mars. So we inhabit this, we populate this, with all our concepts and ideas, we fall for the same traps, and we try to work it out. We try to wake up, but it's a, it's a long process. So if all goes to hell, All that would happen, which would not be a pretty sight. But it would be all that would happen is there'd be a lot of subjective suffering in the minds of individuals who have not realized their freedom from the body and the senses and the mind. There would be a lot of perceived suffering, a ton of perceived suffering, a ton of perceived self importance suffering. And as a result, um, we make this the biggest thing, the biggest, most important thing. And in a sense, it is from our perspective, relative to our duties and what we can do, and why we are here. It is one of the most important uh, aims that we could have as a species is to optimize our civilization to make it as aligned and beneficial for all beings as possible. That is the great pursuit of being human. But I'm just saying, in the grand scheme of things, 
like on a ti on a timeline of the universe, you wouldn't even be able to see the entire human race history. Like it wouldn't even show up on a map, so to speak. So the things we give so much importance is because we're only focused here, but there's so much happening at the same time. So if we can drop this attachment to the outcome, we could be more relaxed about it. Therefore, we could have more insight because we'd make it less about ourselves. We'd, we'd freeze up less, we'd be less stuck in our own egos. And so we'd naturally spot opportunities to be of service we'd naturally have access to downloads and ways to innovate and to change. And we'd naturally have access to this natural sense, this automatic sense of generosity and love and care that's not motivated out of preserving myself. It's just part of the field. Once you realize that we're all waves on the same ocean, then there's a natural, almost as if it comes from the intelligence of the body. It's not even premeditated. It's not like I'm going to care about someone. You just you care because it's like every body is your body. Every being is your being. And you just naturally desire well-being for all. It's just a natural desire. It's not contrived. It's not artificial. It's not out of peer pressure. It's not out of some kind of social justice. It's not conceptual. It's just like breathing. You just love everyone. You just feel generous. You just want everyone to be okay. Um, and that's the only state from which we can make a true difference but we got to get our self-importance out of the way and our fixation on a particular goal. Care and passionately do your do our best, but at the same time, hold it in a light-hearted view. See it in perspective with everything. Don't make it too self-important because you'll freeze up, you'll uh, feel stressed about things, and you won't have access to your intelligence as much as when you're just relaxed and you have faith in humanity or just have faith. Humanity is just an aspect of having faith in existence. And that people could demonstrate continuous stupidity. And you'd still have faith in existence. Uh, maybe not directly in humanity so much, but you'd still have the energy of faith with you. And that would spill out into everything you do and every one you meet. <laughs> nice. What do you think? Yeah, that was kind of like a weird thing to observe today myself that um, I have more faith, like way more faith in existence than in humanity, which... Which, which makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It's quite logical. <laughs> but then the weirdness was that um, that a doomed scenario for humanity could be um, because I trust so much in the faith of existence. And that sounds like a paradox. Um, and that's also the question, can uh, existence be so, and it can, I guess, but like so genius. And if I trust so much in that, that this is like a cycle or this is some kind of purpose that serves the whole of existence more if humanity is doomed than if humanity is like flourishing. Well, you know, my view of parallel realities so again, zooming out, in my understanding, everything that could ever possibly be already exists in some way, shape or form. And so there's already a lot of versions of Earth that have destroyed themselves. And there's already a lot of versions of Earth that are flourishing. So it's not so much a matter of what will be better for creation. It's really an, on an individual basis, each with our consciousness, we choose what reality we will perceive and be a part of based on our overall state of vibration, our state of consciousness, our state of understanding, our state of enlightenment, if you will. Um, and ultimately, it's nothing is better or worse than anything else, because I believe the, uh, the purpose of creation is not comfort, it is learning. And so sometimes discomfort causes greater learning than comfort. Um, anyhow, any situation can be learned from and can be woken up from. So in that vantage point, there's really no ideal situation per se. Although if we want to avoid a ton of 
perhaps unnecessary suffering, at least subjectively perceived suffering, then it would be smart if we woke up to the things that truly matter and that can make a difference in our understanding of life. Um, but I don't see it as a one type of scenario thing, which is also why I'm not that scared of any particular outcome or attached to any particular outcome, because I know ultimately a soul will choose the experience that is relevant for that soul to experience. So I'm not trying to fix anyone. It's uh, up to each of us to choose what we want to choose. I'm just trying to educate, bring awareness to that choice so that the choice can be made more conscious and more available. But that's really my only um, attachment or vision for mankind, if you will, is that they that they get the understanding that they see what they need to see to make truly deliberate choices, rather than unconsciously repeating conditioned patterns out of fear and self importance. Uh, but the actual outcome, there's infinite outcomes, and everyone will experience all these outcomes in different ways yet again. So yeah, not to attach to any particular outcome. I'd like it to be beautiful for everybody. I'd like it to be a, a flourishing civilization where true spirituality is at the heart of the learning of that civilization, of the focus of that civilization, true awakening, enlightenment, self-mastery, self-understanding, self-knowledge, the exploration of what truly matters to an entity, what truly inspires an entity, to have a civilization set up where everything is fair and transparent and honest to the best of our ability and where people can thrive and there can be an abundance of love and our focus is still on learning. We're not complacent in comfort, comfortable utopia. We're actually in a deliberate utopia. We're in a utopia because we no longer need the catalyst to wake up. We've already woken up. We've already gathered the willingness to look at ourselves. And as a result, we perpetuate on our own terms, from our own free will, we choose to continue to learn and deepen our intensity of self mastery, because we want it not because it's forced upon us by nasty circumstances, or hopeless situations, or failures or pain or limitations. We no longer need that to be motivated to care about what's important instead of to be distracted all day long by everything that we see and perceive through the senses. So once we gather a certain amount of self mastery, and desire, earnest desire to learn, to study, to understand consciousness, to understand our emotional bodies, to understand why we do what we do, what we're here for, what's the true meaning of life and all that. Once we have gathered a, a taste for that, once we have gotten a taste for that, and we want more of that taste, we need less and less catalytic events in our lives to wake us up. And so we can actually start to create out of wisdom, deliberately, a utopia of sorts, that would be an ideal situation for humanity. Um, but each is going to make up their own minds as to whether they wish to experience a civilization like that or not. And ultimately, I don't think there's only one world, there is many worlds, there's many parallel realities, quantum science has already indicated this, I have experienced shifting between them many times. So yeah, this is not what it seems. This is one movie. And our perception is based on our perception, not so much on reality, external to us as we think it is. So those that are ready, if you will, or willing, will shift into more aligned realities, more beneficial realities, and others will shift into more and more catalytic realities to wake them up because they're a little stubborn, or they just need more. Um, shaking up instead of waking up. If you're not waking up, you're getting a lot of shaken up. Mm -hmm. So not too concerned, because it's up to each individual. If anything, it's more about educating people to the best of our ability, so that more and more individuals can choose for themselves freely, deliberately, consciously. That's really the main aim for me in this whole thing. Um, I'm not too concerned with any particular outcome. Because again, I don't think there's only one world, I think all outcomes already exist. We're just here to kind of 
plant seeds and give people more opportunity to choose. Not sure if I answered your question. Yeah, but I have an overall feeling that it resonates. Okay. And I find myself like in certain situation with like a people with uh, in my work and other interactions who have like a different understanding of things. Mm -hmm. And um, from a shepherd point of view, I see there's a desire to somehow uh, plant that seed in them. Mm -hmm. But when there's no openness, I just have to let it go. And that kind of hurts. Um, yeah. Like for example, like a specific quick example that happened yesterday, I was with a friend of mine, which I know she has a beautiful heart. And then a certain topic about like Trump came up and she said, like, if you say that opinion, then you leave the house, then you're not allowed here anymore. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Thought she was joking, right? But she actually was so, she was like no single openness for any other like point of view. So I said to her, like, you trust my heart. Right? You know that I'm not like an evil person, so can you just hear my perspective on this? But she was just like not open whatsoever. Wow. Yeah, which kind of like shocked me in a way. Not that much that I was like too upset by it, but there was like a pain of like yeah, some kind of like longing to. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's painful when other selves shoot themselves in the foot with their own insistence and create like a seeming separation between family members, soul family members that doesn't have to be there. It happens all the time. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> sure, yeah. I've had to accept a fair share of that myself. And uh, it's part of the ripening process. Like it makes you even more loving, even more resilient, even more true, even more accepting. And the more accepting you become, the more like God you see, the more pure you become in your perspective, in your intentions, in your motivations. And ultimately, you see beyond the painful interactions. And also see that as a temporary play. And from a meta perspective, you're best friends forever, like literally forever. So there's no mm -hmm. real separation. It's just in the mind of that perceiver. And um, it sucks that's the choice they make. And so we have to accept that choice. And uh, just wish them all the best, send them love and light. And they will, they will remember your input when they're ready to remember it. And then they will change their perspective on that memory, they'll change the energy around that memory. It's just a matter of time. And if they're not ready, it uh, can be difficult if we care about that person in a personal way. It can be difficult to fully let it be. Uh, but it is important that we try to leave them in their free will. Mm. But yeah, it can be tough. Cool. Just use it as an opportunity to uh, break open your own heart more. Mm. Feel that it's like, oh, it hurts. Ah, but it's okay. I know it's okay. Just surrender it to God. Surrender yourself to God. Remember, you don't know much at all. Mm -hmm. So open yourself to that greater knowledge by not insisting on your present knowledge or perspective. Like somehow it must all be okay. And uh, it feels impure to try to infringe upon anyone's free will mm. or try to impose. It's just kind of against the universal law. So we want to avoid that mm. quite naturally. The more tuned we become, that becomes more important. It's to just be and share and radiate and allow. It's like we're sharing seeds. And if people choose to plant them, that's fine. And sometimes randomly they'll get through, even if they don't accept it. And they'll find fertile ground somewhere in their consciousness and it'll start to flower and blossom still by their free will, but they're not conscious of it. So that's beautiful. Just keep being you keep planting seeds, or at least keep giving people the seeds just by sharing. No imp imposition, 
no righteousness. They have their own choice, surrender it, and that's all you can do. Nice. Stay, stay the purest version of yourself so that you at least feel good about the way, the pure way in which you approached every encounter with mm. all your friends and soul family and what have you. Nice. Mm. Okay. Thanks, Sherry. Mm? Thanks for sharing.